Hey, what is up? My name is Matt Workman, and in this video, we're going to be taking the very first official look at Cine Designer for Unreal Engine 5 Editor. This is technically a blueprint asset pack that's available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace, and it's essentially 3D models of camera equipment. Actually, in this case, not camera equipment yet, but grip and lighting equipment at the moment that's going to allow live action directors, cinematographers specifically, to plan, pre-visualize, storyboard, however you want to think about it, live action shoots. This is mostly for planning. A lot of people get confused about why do we need a 3D green screen in a 3D world? The answer is that it's for pre-production, it's for planning. So let's hop right into the editor and we're gonna take a high level overview on what this looks like and what it looks like to use. So here we are in a blank Unreal Engine 5 project and I have imported the Cine Designer assets. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go to demo and then to maps. And we have a couple of example maps here. What we wanna to do to start is right click and we're going to duplicate stage one green screen. And I'm just gonna call this one YT at the end for YouTube, saving it, double clicking, and it should be open over here. So to start, let's take a bit of a float around the stage. We're in this kind of like white warehouse soundstage and we have a grid here, a lighting grid. And I believe this is about 18 feet uh, to the floor, to the grid here. We've got an array of space lights and we have our uh, three wall green screen psych and a couple of lights that are keying our mannequin actor here. We have this LED panel with a soft bank on it. And my favorite that we'll talk about in future episodes in depth uh, is this LED spotlight bouncing off of a 12 by frame. To start, we have our camera here. This is a stock Unreal Engine camera. This is nothing special that, that we've made. We're going to make cameras in the future, but to start, we're like, let's start with lights and grip. That's what's most important to me anyway, in this phase. And so with this camera, you can use move and you can use rotate. And that's going to move the 3D camera around. And this is going to give you a preview of what you're going to see through the camera. If you want to edit settings on this camera, I'm going to make this smaller here, get rid of this, the components view. Uh, unless you're a developer, you pretty much don't ever need to see that. If you want to change the field of view, you're going to have our focal length here. And to change focus, that's in here. And there's a lot of settings to the cinema camera. We're not going to go over all of those in this video. But uh, the most important thing you're going to want to be able to do uh, in the beginning is go to perspective and switch to this camera. Again, you would frame up, change your depth of field and focus and whatnot. Then you would come here and take a high resolution screenshot. This will save this for you that you can then use as a storyboard for whatever. You would go into Photoshop Illustrator or whatever app you're making your storyboards in. This is how you're going to get your storyboards out. And same thing if you are making technical diagrams, I'm going to deselect this. And you're just trying to send something like this render to your crew. You could also just take a high resolution, high resolution screenshot or just a regular OS screenshot. That'll work too. So a really low fi workflow is planned for the beginning. There's no like traditional rendering or anything like that. We're just using the viewport for it's like raw speed. And it honestly still incredible lighting quality, but I am mostly relying on the high resolution screenshot for making storyboards really quickly. So that is the basics of cameras. Let's look at a couple of these lights. So what we can do here is um, find these lights in the outliner. I'm gonna select these space lights and you'll see that Everything is here in somewhat organized folders, not the most organized. And I'm gonna shrink these up. And we basically have the environment, which you don't have to worry about that. And we have our CD equipment. In here is a folder of space lights and we can just hide them all like this by clicking the little eye. That's one way of doing things. The other way is to come down here to details and yours again might look something like, oh, can I get the view back? There it is. So yours might look like this, but again, I would suggest closing this. You don't really need to see it. And if you have a ton of parameters down here, most of these are not relevant to you at all, unless you're like really making like a game or an app. 
So you can switch to general and you'll have its position, rotation, scale, and then the custom uh, features, options, controls that I've programmed into the Cine Designer assets. So we can select all the space lights over here in the outliner. And like we saw before, we could hide them completely, but what I would rather do is open up light settings and turn them off like this. So our space lights are now off and we can kind of see the scene a little bit darker. Next, I'm going to click on the Chimera here, the SoftBank, and we're going to open up common parameters again and we're gonna turn that off. So we're slowly eliminating lights and seeing how dark the scene is. We also have over here uh, an overhead light. This is really acting as like a light for the stage because if you turn off all the lights, well, it's very dark. There's no skylight or traditional like Unreal Engine um, kind of video game lighting uh, going on here. It's pretty much fully cinematic. So if all the lights turn off, it's, it's very dark. That's not always the case in 3D graphics. I just wanted to make that clear here, that distinction that that is the design for this type of lighting system as well. Lastly, we can click on the kind of spotlight Fresnel barn doors part of this light setup here. We're gonna go over how this goes together in the next video, and we could turn that off. And now it's much darker, and all we have is kind of like the ambient bounce from the light off screen, which is pretty special that that even exists. And then we can slowly turn these back on like this. This light, if you look a little bit deeper, and then even deeper, has barn doors that you can change the barn door settings on. This light here, as we're gonna go turn it back on in a second, let's turn it back on. This has uh, some control grids that you can turn off, turn back on, kind of box the light in, you can change the color and whatnot. And then let's go back and turn our space lights on here, selecting all of them, and they are back on. These actually have skirts, which is going to take light off of the side of the psych and just push it mostly straight down. So each one of these Cine Designer lights has different types of controls, but generally you can find them all here. So you can just play around, select one of the lights, look what options there are, and it should be pretty straightforward what they do. And I would suggest um, moving some lights around, maybe change some colors change the shot, take some screenshots, and that should be a pretty fun and hopefully successful, fruitful uh, first 10 or 15 minutes in Unreal Engine 5 with Cine Designer. So that wraps it up for this very first look at Cine Designer for Unreal Engine 5. Editor, we went really quickly through some of the basics of the system, but hopefully it's enough to get you started to kind of play around. In the next video, we're gonna look at some of the custom UIs that we have in the uh, asset pack. They're gonna really help a lot. Actually, it doesn't really work without the UI, so we definitely need to get into that. And we're gonna look at assembling our own lights, light stands, and some kind of nuances on how we actually use these lights in the editor. I'll see you on the next video.